Let's pray. Father, we worship you and praise you. We're so honored to become to come before you, Father. During this holiday, federal holiday of the 4th of July, people are still celebrating. And we thank you for this long weekend for so many workers. And we thank you for the United States of America. You providentially, you sovereignly caused us to, of those of us who were born here, to be born here for your plan and for your purpose. For we were born for such a time as this. Every human being has been born for a purpose. And you have a plan for our lives. Lord, I thank you that it is such a privilege to come before you here tonight, today, in your presence where there is fullness of joy. Let our hearts be open to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. Thank you that we are saved, that we're saved by grace through the vehicle of faith. Hallelujah, not of ourselves, so we can't boast about it. We can't brag about it. You did it. All in all, Lord, I, 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 Father, you created everything. Lord, you created it all. Holy Spirit, the power of God, paraclete, one called alongside to help. We never minimize you, Holy Spirit. You're God Almighty. Amen. Here on the earth, leading us and guiding us and showing us the way. Help us not to be in the way. <laughs> Glory to God. For you are, Lord Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through you. Yes. Period. Yes. Your daughter, uh, Hazel, was kind. She said that other religions were idols. She was being kind. Because reality is, they're demons. You're the one true God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. We receive your engrafted word today that is able to save our souls, yeah. our intellect, our will, and our emotions. We thank you that we're growing, and we thank you that your word causes us to grow and brings faith. Yeah. And so we thank you for it, and we thank you for this message today. May it fall on ears and good ground. And may it produce a harvest for the kingdom for all eternity. Satan, you will not be able to come and steal this word from anybody that hears it. From those who are here today, those who are watching, and those who may watch later. We thank you, Father, for it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God is good all the time. And there's never a time when God's not good. What this is, is a, uh, a $700 paycheck revealed. There was so much that God taught me. Uh, three Sundays ago, I believe it was, I did a message on the $700 paycheck. And I went real fast. And I covered a whole lot of ground. And so you all heard the entire uh, process from beginning to end, uh, the Lord told me that he wanted me to really delve into it because over 35 years or so or more, God has taught me many things of what happened in that process. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here that can learn something? Amen. Are you all, Do you all have teachable spirits? Are you ready to learn more about God? Uh, I was sharing with Raylene that as I'm putting this together and and letting the Lord uh, remind me and teach me more, uh, my faith is strengthened. My, uh, my understanding of these things is deepened. And so I can operate in these things on a greater level than ever before. Hallelujah. And that's because faith can grow. Jesus was amazed at little faith and great faith. Do you all remember that? 
O ye of little faith, he would say. Or, I have not seen so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel, speaking of a particular individual. So faith can grow. And that's the most important thing that you can understand, is that faith can grow. You, you can become stronger and stronger in the mechanisms and the tools that God has given us to live by. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they're not of this realm here. See, I made a mistake one time, and I said there's only one realm, and that's the kingdom of God. That's true in a sense, but yet we understand that here's the natural world that we live in. And then we call where the place that the Lord lives in uh, the supernatural. Is that right? And the supernatural because of the laws that govern the universe. There are laws that govern the universe. You all understand about the law of gravity, don't you? It's been in existence since forever. Amen? Guess who invented gravity? God did, because he invented everything. And so one of the things that will solve almost all your problems immediately is when you understand that there's one true God, and so you can quit imagining Aliens coming from another planet to our planet and seeding the oceans and causing us to uh, evolve. There is an evolution. You understand that things, we have equipment that we're using right now that they didn't have 2,000 years ago. And we have ways and means of reaching people that we didn't have before. So technology has evolved. And our understanding of the universe has evolved. The truth of the matter is, though, is that this equipment would have worked 2,000 years ago just the same as it works now. Hallelujah. All of it was available. We just didn't know. So the very fact that we have the ability to discover tells us God is. Because God is. And so because everything is so organized... And because everything is, and see, these are the type of scientific proofs. See, God can be proved scientifically. And these are the reasons why an atheist like uh, Antony Flew, he was one of the world's most notorious atheists. Yet before he died, he was shown scientific evidence that caused him to completely change his uh, whole uh, belief system. He said, there's a God. And he, he wrote reams of papers and books trying to convince you and I not to believe in God. But in the end, he, he was saying, he wrote a book, God Exists. And he wished he had had time before he died to have rewritten everything that he ever wrote. And folks, he was the world's most notorious atheist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're here today and you say, well, I believe in God. Well, that's good. So do demons. Yeah. So does the devil. Yeah. So belief in God is good, the one true God, yet he wants us to go further than that. So the $700 paycheck revealed, what that means is revelation knowledge. What is revelation knowledge? That means information is given to you from the Lord, from the spirit realm, and it lifts the veil off your eyes, and you see things that you've never seen before. My first experience of revelation knowledge was when I was four years old over there on, at 31st and uh, Riverside area, 31st and Cincinnati, uh, when I was just a baby of four years old playing in my sandbox. That's where uh, I grew up when I, first, when I was first born. That's where I lived. At 31st, and I didn't say come over to mom and dad's house. I said come over to my house. Hallelujah. See, Jesus had a house. He had several houses, but let's not go into that. So I'm back there playing in the sandbox at the age of four years old, and something comes on me. Now, I know my family members were praying for me. And uh, I was uh, enveloped in the presence of God. And that's what I know it to be now. I didn't know what it was then. Yet I looked around me. I remember looking at this hedge up against the chain link fence over here on the right. 
And uh, if you want to get an idea of where this is, the gathering place was in our backyard, basically. You just went over, and there it is. So uh, anyway, it, it wasn't there then. I mean, uh, later there were apartments there, and they tore all that out and put in the gathering place. So anyway, that's where we were. And I just looked around me, and I knew that there was more than what I could see with my physical eye. So I've always been very sensitive, not because of me. I'm not bragging on me. Yet I've always been very sensitive to the spirit realm because of God. God made me aware of it when I was just a baby. And I've always been aware of when his presence is real strong. And, uh, but I've always, I'm always in the presence of God. I, I, I don't know how to explain that. There's been just a couple of times when I didn't sense the presence of God. And it, it, just, it just was bizarre to me at that moment. And I've been through a lot of different things that you might say, well, you weren't even saved <laughs> back then. Well, praise the Lord. So the kingdom of God was revealed to me. That which was unseen, I knew there was something beyond what I could see. And it was revealed that that existed. Do you all understand what I'm saying? So this is talking about faith without feelings. Look, understand that you're a three-part being. You're a spirit. Say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. I, live I live in a body. And I have a soul. Have a soul. So your soul is made up of three parts. And we're to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. What does that mean? In other words, you are positionally already saved, obviously. You're seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty in heavenly places. So you are saved. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what does this mean, the saving of our souls? Well, that's the ongoing. See, there's positional sanctification, which happens immediately when you accept Christ. Sanctification is becoming the holiness of God. Holy. And, uh, but then there's the ongoing sanctification that takes place here in this realm of your flesh. Hallelujah. And your intellect, your will, and your emotions. See, you're a three-part being. Your body, you're a spirit, first and foremost. Say, I'm a spirit, I'm a spirit. And, I have a soul. and I have a soul. Your soul is made up of three parts. Your intellect, your will, and your emotions. Well, God's an emotional God because we're made after his image. Your emotions are involved in your relationship with the Lord. All right? There's so much that the Lord's been sharing me, and it's philosophical in, in part, yet everything that I preach can be backed up by the Word because God won't allow me to preach anything that's not backed up by the Word. In fact, sometimes God talks to me about something, and I have to so I, where is that? Boom, he'll bring something and show me where it is in the Word. Isn't that neat? Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, oftentimes you've read it, you've heard it. Sometime in your life, everything's there. And so the Holy Spirit just brings it to the fore, uh, foreground so that you can see it. Hallelujah. That's being revealed. Amen. So that's the $700 paycheck. Faith without feelings. I, I have to say this because God has just been dealing with me about this. So everything that we're going to be talking about is first and foremost an emotional, a soul. It's, it incorporates every part of your being, your body, your spirit, your soul, your emotions. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to change that. Come on. <laughs> Let's all. Come on, y'all. Hey, I like that. Come on, y'all. We're in Oklahoma anyway, so we might as well say it. Come on, y'all. Let's get after it here. I can talk. It's good because I'm from Oklahoma. I know how to talk Oklahoman. Hallelujah. That's funny because if I was doing a lot of voiceovers and radio and things like that, you got a pair of headphones on and, and you hear yourself talk and you go, is that really me? And you go, huh, when you first hear yourself. And uh, But if I haven't done that in a while, because like right now, I, I can tell that I'm sounding pretty like I am from Oklahoma. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I am. So if I've got an accent, there you go. I'm from here. <laughs> Amen. So come on, y'all. 
I like that. <laughs> it's having a, re- a living relationship with God. And if you're like me, if you believe what I believe, then you believe that every single human on the planet absolutely has to have a, a living relationship with God for themselves. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we have a Christian worldview. This is based on having a living relationship with, with God. That means your emotions are involved. Obviously, God gave us emotions, so emotions yet yeah, emotions can be sanctified and brought in. Well, Jesus wept, we know that. And he threw overthrew tables. That was an emotional outburst of a new thing, you know. Came in and he said, Hey, what are you doing? This is my house is supposed to be called a house of prayer. You turned it into a den of thieves. And he started, Alibaba, you know, the den of thieves, all those guys. He started throwing tables over and saying, what are you all doing? Got out a whip. Hallelujah. But what we want to do is have the faith of God. Now, see, this says, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Well, uh, an in-depth look at that translation or uh, a translation of that is to, or to have the God kind of faith. Or have the same kind of faith that God has. Glory to God. What is that? God is a faith God and does everything by faith. Everything. That's how he creates everything. That's th- This universe, they say, well, we can't keep up with it. Science says, we can't keep up with it. The number of stars keeps uh, growing exponentially that they're saying is out there. That means don't believe anything science says. (laughs) No, you can believe certain things science says. But boy, they're on a journey of discovery. And that just shows us there is a God. Hallelujah. And he does everything by faith. What kind of faith? How do you get the same kind of faith that God has? Or the faith of God? How do you have the same faith that he has? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or you could say it like this. You might say that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. It is a, and by the way, if faith comes, are you all with me? If faith comes, that means faith is someplace. How can it come if it's not someplace? Faith comes. Of course, it's the faith of God that God has given us. A, a Words are carriers, and they carry faith. The Bible, God has created the Bible by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has created, hallelujah, spoken the Word into existence, and it was written down so that it would speak into our hearts, and it would create faith in us. Or it comes. Faith is substance. So uh, faith cometh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is a function of who God is. Amen. It's not him in totality, but faith is an aspect of something, is a tool that God uses to create you. He used faith to create you. In your mother's womb. He used faith to create the world. He used faith to create everything. And it's multifaceted. You can't have just... Most people, here's what we do. We say, what faith are you? Well, I'm a Muslim. Well, there's no such thing in reality. Did you hear me? That's that's made up by man. Well, you all just make up Christianity. Why don't you all just believe what you want to believe and we'll believe what we want to believe? Well, is that the truth? See, truth is. Either it's the truth or it's not the truth. It can't be both. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. It's either the truth or it's not the truth. It can't be both. Hallelujah. Yet God is multifaceted. See, often we use a diamond. I'm not the only preacher that's used a diamond to show the different facets of Christianity or God. Amen? And when we say God, 
we mean Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hazel said that earlier. She made it very clear. Hallelujah. God is a uniplural word. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in God. Amen. Made up of three persons. Faith is believing and knowing that God exists. Amen. That is part of it. But that's where almost everybody stops. Almost everybody stops and says God exists. Well, I'm just going to let God do it. See, some things are actually not responsible. You're not being responsible because there's a man's side and a God's side. He wouldn't give us faith if he didn't expect us to use it. Okay, there's a good place for everybody to shout amen. He wouldn't have given us faith. And how does faith come? Whenever you read the word and then you start saying the word out loud, faith comes. Hallelujah. So faith is. Faith is believing that God is. And that scripture references Hebrews 11.6. Uh, we believe that God is and he's the rewarder of those. Who, you're getting a review. Hallelujah. This is, we're in part three right now. The faith of God is creative, calls those things that be not as though it were, though they were, Romans 4.17. Faith is substance, it's actually a substance. It comes from one place to you. Obviously, it comes from God to you. His faith comes to you, and God gives us the ability to use his faith or have the faith of God or have the same kind of faith that God has. Then faith is substance, something that you can touch. Faith is a fight. And this takes us into part three, because what is faith? Faith is a shield. Hallelujah. So you have to incorporate all these different facets of what faith is into your overall definition, or you don't have a full definition of what faith is. If you're... If you're uh, belief that faith is just believing that God exists, then you're missing out on the fullness of what God wants you to have. Amen. Above all, taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. Now, this is based on uh, the armory of the time. Paul's talking here. And those uh, shields were curved, and you could fit a whole man behind a shield. And then what they would do also is they would hold those shields up. Several of them would come together and put their shields together, and they would block uh, the arrows that were being flown. So they would actually, some would put the shields over their heads. Others, it looked like a big old giant turtle just sitting out there in the middle of the road. Amen. <laughs> you know, with all these shields uh, wrapping around them, right? And then uh, you may have seen it in, in a movie or whatever, but they, you see a bunch of arrows hitting this shield. Then they whip out their sword and just knock those arrows off and keep fighting. Hallelujah. Uh, because it would make the shield a lot heavier, having all those arrows in it, so they would just knock them off with their sword. And that's important because the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you'll be able to quench some of the fiery darts. See, what you have to understand is the fight of faith is, one, that Satan doesn't want you to have faith at all to begin with. So he's going to fight the word. Did God really say? Are you all with me? Did God really say? And so, first of all, he's going to get, try to get you to doubt the word. Secondarily, he wants to, when you do have faith, he'll do everything in his power to get you off your faith. Well, I'm just going to dump a bunch of sickness on you. I'm going to take every bit of finances out of your pocket. I'm going to destroy your relationship with your friends and family. He'll do anything he can to get you off your faith. That's why it's called the good fight of faith. Because our fight is to stay in faith. And how do you stay in faith? Faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And then we have weapons to, to stay in faith. We, I worship you. I praise you. I glorify you. I magnify you. You are the one true God. You begin to tell God who he is and how often. And you begin to, like you, uh, David had on his staff, 
at looking at uh, you know the shepherd's staff. He had carved in to those staffs. What they would do is they would carve in their victory. So he had made a carving of a lion. He made a carving of a bear. He made a carving of everything that he had victory over. And so when he held up that staff and looked at Goliath, he said, the same way I defeated the lion and the same way I defeated the bear is the same way I'm going to defeat you. Come on. Hallelujah. He, he, what did you say, Hazel? He took the lion by his beard. Come on. See, David was being honored because he was out in the field and he lived by faith. And because faith pleases God, he was the one that was chosen because he had more faith than everybody in all Israel. Proved it by looking at this huge guy whose head was would be sticking outside the roof of this place. Nothing to see up here. <laughs> Everything's happening down there where y'all are. Hallelujah. And David took him out. What? By faith. His faith caused that vehicle of faith caused that rock to go right where it was supposed to go. Hallelujah. That's good news. Some of the fiery darts, the fiery darts are coming. You guys, the fiery darts are coming. We say no weapon formed against me will prosper. We don't say there aren't any weapons formed against me. That would be a lie. Well, we do say no weapon formed against me will prosper. Every weapon that comes against me is defeated and quenched by my shield of faith. And what the way that we see the shield of faith, like these guys were like a turtle, how they all would work together. They would even put ramparts on top of a, a, all of them holding their shields up. They would put ramparts and, and other people, they would just make it so that they could climb up uh, to a higher place on top of those shields. As men held their shields, they would use that as a way of getting up and fighting the enemy. Hallelujah, that's good news. But those shields would, would protect every aspect of who they were. Their front, their side, their top, and their rear. Amen? So that's how the shield of faith works. You are completely surrounded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith is a law. We talked about just a minute ago, the law of gravity. Amen. Amen. We talked about the law of gravity and how that is in force right now. So, faith is a law. This law is a force or the force of faith or the power of faith. Hallelujah. Faith is a mechanism. It's like a wrench. Have you ever seen a wrench? that had one opening on one end and one opening on the other? Well, it had two facets, you might say, of the same diamond. had more than one facet. You could uh, It's a tool that you could uh, use on two separate kinds of bolts, nuts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So faith is a law. Uh, you you, you kind of understand where, uh, who was that old boy that came up with the, Star Wars and the Force and all that. You know who I'm talking about? The guy that invented all that? I, I, George Lucas. And so he came up with the Force. But do you notice any similarities? Have you ever watched that and noticed all the similarities? He, and I said, well, you got everything out of the Bible, George. I mean, I could say that. I don't know if he ever read the Bible, but everything he's talking about, you know. Because faith is what holds everything together. Hallelujah. It's the force that holds all things. Amen. So where then is the boasting? It is, it is excluded. By what kind of law? It is a law. So look, look, the Ten Commandments are still in existence today. Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. The Old Testament is solid. It stands we're not throwing, we're not tearing out any part of our Bibles around here. Glory to God. 
We just got a great Old Testament teaching today about the covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham. Listen to that. God made the covenant with Abraham. He even put him to sleep. So he wouldn't get into doubt and unbelief. Because he, there was, and he swore by himself because there was no one greater to swear by. Hallelujah. When you make a covenant, a blood covenant with somebody, let's not, let's not get sidetracked. But when you make a blood covenant with somebody, everything they have is yours. And everything you have is theirs. So God's faith becomes our faith. Hallelujah. Uh, of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Faith is a law that when you, when you step out, when we walk around, we're constantly exercising the law of gravity. In fact, we don't have to exercise it. It is a force that is in place all the time. And faith is a law that is in place all the time. It's like a wrench. It's in place. It's a tool. It's in place all the time. And the opposite of our five physical senses and our, our emotions of our soul and our intellect and our will, it is something that has to come to you that you use and it's how we, the law of faith is how the kingdom of God operates and how everything in the universe operates, how God causes all things to happen. Maybe someday science will figure out, oh, this is all held together by faith. A law. Just the same as the law of gravity. It's happening and working. The law of faith is working and operating right now whether you step into it and operate it the way you can as a human being that is saved by grace through faith. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Hallelujah. We maintain, therefore, that man is justified by faith, see that's another thing, faith is justification. Hallelujah, you're justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Amen. That's why it's not by works. Now, you don't see the word faith in here, but we see how God does things. God who at sundry times, which means a variety. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, our Savior, praise God, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. You see, when you understand that Jesus Christ is the Word of God, and then what? How does faith come to you? By hearing what? The Word of God. So you're hearing Christ, hallelujah, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, praise you God, hallelujah, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Faith, holding all things, see faith is inferred here holding all things together by faith. Hallelujah. When he had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Wow. Wow. Well, you're just going to have to get the revelation of it. Faith is a law, and it's how all things were made, and it's how all things are being upheld. We see that here. Colossians 1, 16 through 19, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Well, then he created the devil. <laughs> he created Lucifer. And then Lucifer had free choice and said, I shall be like the Most High God. Made the wrong choice. 
He knew how powerful he was, and he's powerful, still is. Deception, all that. But he doesn't know how powerful God is. He still doesn't know how powerful God is. For some, he's so deranged, sociopath, whatever you want to call him, he still believes he's going to win this thing. And he's, he says, well, look, I can defeat all these Christians. I can certainly, I can defeat God. Yes, Amen. Don't let him defeat you. Stay in faith. Say, fight to stay in faith. We're created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In other words, praise God. He's keeping it going. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence, for it pleased the Father, in him should all fullness dwell. And guess what? You can say this after me. I am the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Isn't that powerful? I went backwards, back to Hebrews 1, 3. Uh, this is verse 3. He's upholding all things by the word of his power. Aren't you glad that God didn't say, let there be light, and then walked away? Or let there be the firmament, and all the things that he said, let there be. And he didn't just do that and walk away. No, he keeps everything going by faith. He's holding this whole universe this the science says that the universe is uh, expanding faster than the speed of light. That's because so many people are getting saved. I have a contention. I don't know. It's not in the Word, but I do know He's made a lot of mansions for us. Hallelujah! How do you know He didn't create a planet just for you, Patty? It's the Patty planet. Hallelujah! Amen. And he's keeping it spinning while you're waiting on you to get there. Hallelujah. Amen. He's keeping it going. He's keeping all things going. And see, God stops with God. Everything stops with God. And yet in him, he opens it up and says, In him, hallelujah, is eternity, is infinity. It goes on and it's never ending. His universe uh, he may have more than one universe. He can do whatever he wants to. He's God. Yeah, that's right. And there's nothing else that created anything. That's right. So you're an a creationist, aren't you? Well, sure I am. You're not? You're an idiot. If you're not a creationist, I, I, I apologize if that offends you, but you're an idiot. Yeah. If you don't believe in God, there's something wrong with you. There's not anything wrong with the people of Christ. See, they think that we're nuts because I believe this. I'm a wackadoo. The truth is, it's foolishness to them. And God has taken the foolish things to confound the wise. Well, how can that possibly, says Antony Flew, who finally has a revelation that God is real. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. You all don't know who Antony Flew is because I didn't put his picture up there. But uh, that dude led a lot of people astray because he was convinced that there is no God. Then he became convinced, what have I thought all this time there is a God? See, you guys are way ahead of the, of the ball game here. You guys are way ahead. You're already winning just by believing that God is. Now you apply these other aspects of what faith is. Praise God. You are on your way to victory in every area of your life. Hallelujah. We've already said this. He's upholding everything. That's how God created the universe. By his faith. The power or the force of faith. Do you understand that faith is working whether you feel like it, look like it, smell like it? Well, you sound just like Hazel. I know. We're believers. We believe this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith, there is a faith without feelings. In other words, faith doesn't have anything to do with your five physical senses. Hallelujah. Yet it will enhance your five physical senses 
and there is joy, and we'll, we'll find out because faith is more than, well, I haven't even finished what, about what faith is. But faith is a law that is an operation, and when you step over on it and stand on it, it's just like, praise God, somebody shout, it's like we know that there's the law of gravity, but how many of you know that there's also the law of lift? The law of lift is what they finally figured out. Science finally figured out. It always existed. It's what caused birds to be able to fly from day one. But And the law of lift is in activation right now. Uh, hazel, it supersedes. Hallelujah. I like it when I plant a seed when hazel's preaching. You know why? Because I know my, my seed is a super seed. <laughs> but it supersedes. Amen. The law of lift supersedes and overpowers the law of gravity. They actually know that they can actually have anti-gravity uh, machines and cause things to float. I won't go there. Hallelujah. And praise God. Praise God. What happens? We're taking something that is supernatural it's in the realm of God. It's in the kingdom of God. And it comes to me because God's given me his word. And when God gives me his word, I look at that and I receive his word, hallelujah, into my heart. And it's engrafted. It becomes part of me. It's engrafted in. That means it becomes you. Hallelujah. And so that word causes faith to come. And then faith comes. Amen. And that faith is what operates the uh, spirit realm. Operate, it's the law that governs, hallelujah, the supernatural or the realm of God or the kingdom of God. Faith is the tool that operates. You might even call it the sense of faith. You have your five physical senses that are right here and you touch things and you might say this, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not being able to connect with with the five physical senses. That's when he says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen or perceived by the five physical senses. Hallelujah. So therefore, with the five physical senses, you feel. You see, you feel with the five physical senses. You feel with your emotions. Faith is outside of that. Faith is outside of that. So it has nothing to do with the way you feel. The way you feel can be changed by the law of faith. How's that? By calling those things that be not as though they were. It's not going around saying, uh, I'm not sick. My nose is not running. Uh, I'm not coughing. <coughs> no, that's not. That's. It's not calling those things that are as though they're not. It's calling those things that be not as though they were. Are you all with me? It's creative. That's one of the definitions. Faith is creative. Hallelujah. And so you can use that if you don't feel well. Father, I thank you that you're the healer. I thank you, Jesus, that you're the healer. By your stripes I have been healed therefore I am healed I thank you that I'm healed in Jesus name by your stripes I am healed by your stripes I am healed in other words you can either be a thermometer or a thermostat I know I've said this over and over again but we need to hear it over and over again why from hearing and hearing and hearing you finally get the picture basically you finally understand what's going on hallelujah glory to God it's good isn't it because you can use this for anything. Me, I'm losing weight because I have to. I'm, bec I'm becoming insulin sensitive. In other words, I'm fighting insulin resistance in my body. Well, I'm doing that by faith first. I call it, I say, I thank you, Father, that you've healed this diabetes in my body in Jesus' name. And you've healed this insulin resistance. Therefore, I claim, I claim I claim thermostat, thermostat. Thermometer is you're insulin resistant. You're a diabetic. I have been healed by the power of God, 
and I command my body to be insulin sensitive. Are you all with me? Does this make sense? I'm, my body is insulin sensitive. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm calling those things to be not because insulin spikes and the food that they've been cramming down our throats since we were children and we didn't know it is full of preservatives and things that cause insulin spikes. And when you have these insulin spikes, it causes fat to form. Huh? Well, now that you know. But see, I'm commanding this insulin, my body to be insulin sensitive, and I'm losing weight. I thank you, Lord, that I'm the proper weight for life and health. I'm just saying that I'm doing this. I'm talking about me. I'm using this to lose weight and to get in, in better physical shape and b better physical health. Do you know that they're saying that these insulin spikes, diabetes, is the cause of heart disease, uh, blindness? We can go on and on. So I thought, well, you guys are telling me all this stuff. What I need to do is get rid of insulin resistance. What I need to do is get rid of diabetes and everything else will start coming into place. Amen. So I call those things that be not as though they were. I am, I claim that I am calling that forth insulin sensitive in Jesus' name. Isn't that good? That's just a demonstration of putting faith to work. Now that's working. I like your purse, by the way. That's working, hallelujah, that's working, amen, it's working because it's a law, I'm just putting the law into practice and it's working whether I can see it, feel it, taste it, smell it, hear it, it's working, it's working, somebody shout, amen. see I tell you somebody who got a hold of that is, uh, well, I would tell you if I could remember his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he would actually put disease, scrape foam and have it in his hand, and uh, they put it under a microscope, and stuff would just die in his hand. These, these bubonic plague and stuff like that. Y'all know his name. No. Well, he could do it too. <sighs> Praise the Lord. They have healing rooms. And a place where you can go and it's named after him, his ministry. Yeah. Everybody's, they know who he is, but they don't, nobody knows his name. And you'd probably know his name if I hadn't said something, <laughs> right? It's back, it's in the library, that book. <laughs> you can go find it real quick. No, we'll just continue here. Do you understand the power or the force of faith? God just didn't leave you alone. He didn't leave you stranded, human. We're human beings. In Him we move and have our being. Christian is a state of being. It is not a faith. Because if it's a faith, that means there's a myriad of faiths out there. Which faith are you? It's not a denomination. I'm going to go into what, what faith is not, but that's not today. Thank you, sister. John G. Lake. John G. Lake. How did you figure that one out? <laughs> you didn't want to be corrected. <laughs> but no, it, it, Smith Wigglesworth, praise God, of course. But uh, John G. Lake, we know, and there's others, but there was just a lot of stories about how he would do that, and they would actually do scientific experimentation where he put his hand on a, a person's infected leg and, and prayed and believed and released his faith. And they said that they could see that whatever infection was going on was changing whenever he put his hand on the individual. Hallelujah! That is just like really loud. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can release faith. You see, uh, James clarified something. I'm finished for today. James clarified something. He said, faith without works is dead, 
being alone. What's the number one way that you work your faith? You said it earlier, by what you say. 